Father, we just thank you for the fresh move of God that's splitting the, the heavens and bringing a new movement into the city of Nairobi, Kenya. What happened in the year 2000, and then again in 2004, and then again in 2007 and beyond, in different visitations you brought to this city, where the enemy tried to act stupid and fight it and hurt it, it'll not happen again this time. And Father, I command in Jesus' name that anyone that would try to raise their hand against your anointing or your anointed, they will fall down and not get up. No matter who they are, I thank you that this will happen in Jesus' name. I speak this by divine authority, by the word of the Lord. And we thank you for a fresh visitation upon the people where miracles will become a normal everyday thing. Supernatural provision of finance, supernatural provision of, of the miraculous to break poverty, to break depression, to break struggling and all this victim kind of mentality that's in people that have become weak when really they're supposed to be strong. Lord, you said in Revelation 1.6, we are kings and priests. So what happened to that? And you said in Revelation 5.12 that you were slain before the foundation of the world to give, uh, to, to receive, but then to give it back to us because you're God and you didn't need it yourself. Power and riches and wisdom and glory and honor and might, strength, and blessing for the purpose of taking dominion. And I thank you, Lord, that this is going to be the day and the hour when people are going to rise up. There's going to be a rising up, a rising up. And I command the fire of heaven to even hit the parliament house, the state house, the ministry houses, the government arena. They're going to be touched by fire. And many are going to repent and give their lives to Jesus. Because this is a Christian nation. And the forces of uh, uh, the other nations and the other people that want to come and set up their things here and take it, they're not going to get through with it. I stand in the way of them. I stand in the gap in the way of them. Lord, you said in Ezekiel 22, 30, you look for a man and stand in the gap and found no one. But I say, here I am, as, as Isaiah said to you in Isaiah 6, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up in his train filled the temple. And I said, Lord, you could use me. Here I am. If you will it, let it be so. So God does have a remnant. He does have prophets. He does have people. And we're going to stand in the way that the enemy cannot begin to take. Father, I declare the fire of God upon America from over here in Africa. We throw the fire across the water onto the servants of God and the people that need to rise up now in America. Though we're here, you can move there because there's no distance of the Spirit. Raise up warriors in all of the 50 states in the United States, as you spoke to me already. New apostolic prophetic companies of people that are going to have an assignment to take their region, their city, their states, and do it here in Nairobi, do it here in Kenya, do it in Tanzania, do it in Uganda, do it in all of the other nations of East Africa and across the whole continent. Thank you, Lord, to the ends of the earth. I'm not going to get into the other parts of the world, but all of the Places on earth need to have apostles and prophets, not people that just want a title. A title is meaningless if it's man's title. Even some, you said, Lord, if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good thing, but it's like the desire of men. And then, but then there's qualifications that need to be in the life of that one. So, but the, the more powerful thing is Ephesians 4.11. When he said, I gave, Jesus said, I gave. Not man, you didn't do it yourself. I chose you. You didn't choose me. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the church, for the, for the perfection, uh, perfecting of the saints, that we grow up, all of us. Now, this is the word. All of us to become perfect, strong men and the ladies, women, to stand in the stature of Christ. To do what? To take dominion in the earth. It is our country, it is our land, it is our world. The time of the Antichrist is not yet. Jesus, you said in Matthew 24, when you start to see the signs, know it's the beginning of sorrows, but the end is not yet. We heard this word from you, Lord, uh, last year, that you see the signs of the times, things changing, but the end is not yet. The church still needs to rise again in power. When the trumpet blows, we're leaving. Until then, we're blessed. And you said, Lord Jesus, occupy until I come. 
Don't relent, church. Don't relent. Don't back up. Don't go weak. Don't go cold. Don't say, well, it's just like how it is these days. No, it isn't. And I curse this pandemic in lockdown. I curse it. I curse it. I curse it. Remove it off the earth in Jesus' name. This stupid thing, demonic, planned thing from China. I break its power. I break its hold in Jesus' name. I command it. Father, let this nonsense stop. Let this nonsense be stopped. Let the people go free. Let the churches go free. There needs to be liberty. Anything else is of the devil. Let the people understand that. Father, we command even government arenas to obey you and to invoke the good laws, not the bad ones. We pray for those nations that have gotten under the hand of the Antichrist spirit already. We see the movement of it happening, but it's not time yet. The Lord says it's not time yet. I want to raise my church in power, and I said I will not come again until I see a church without spot or blemish, a, a, a church triumphant, victorious, not weak and defeated and victimized, not oppressed, not stuck, not in lack, but in riches and wealth and power. You're empowering your people, Lord, to begin to bring change everywhere they are. Yes, Lord. Okay. Holy Spirit, you are going to visit people personally. They are going to have fresh visitations. They're going to have ep the epiphany, that commissioning of the next season, the blueprint from heaven will be imparted and declared and brought down into them, into their spirit by visitation of God, by visitations of God, and people are going to begin to see the hand of God begin to unfold the next season. Many people are saying, what do I do now? What's next? Look at all the trouble that's going on. And many weak people have fallen off their positions. It's a tragedy. And I want to say the one you don't need to offend is God. Who cares about offending people? Don't fear man, the Bible said. Jesus even said, fear the one who can cast body and soul into hell. And that's not the devil, that's God. The devil can't cast anybody into hell. If you just think for a minute, you can understand what the scripture means. If you just use your mind that God gave you, the devil has no authority. He's not a boss. He's a created thing. He's the fallen angel. And he's already defeated by the blood of Jesus. So why are people so subjected to him? I'm reminded of the scripture where it says, uh, uh, is this the one that deceived the nations? Look at the pitiful little stupid looking little thing, this devil, this Lucifer, this, this deformed angel. Do you know every demon that's ugly and like a monstrous kind of creature now, they were once beautiful angelic beings. God, when God cursed them, their, 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 their appearance changed, their nature changed. Now they're ugly little things and people think they're so subject to them. Why? Why? Is this the, the day will come? Is this the one? who deceived so many people. It need not be so. But here's the key to how to overcome all that. The power, as I said before, the power of the Holy Ghost. Without him, you have nothing that you can do. Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. And without the power of the Holy Ghost, you, you, you can't produce anything supernatural. But we're supposed to live in the realm of so much glory where it's like we're, our life every hour of every day is naturally supernatural. And I tell you, that's been lost. Sad to say, what a tragedy that sometimes the Holy Ghost himself is the least known person in the church. Why? The Lord says, what has become of my people? Paul even said, who has bewitched you to believe something else? There's another scripture I was listening to, I was looking at yesterday, that says uh, 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 senseless arguments and all that. You know, arguments and debatings and all that. that, that that's just not according to the, it's not according to the, the, the mind of Christ. These things are, are, are evil. Uh, James talked about sensual wisdom, but there's also the thing of divine wisdom. And James 1, is it the 18th verse somewhere in there, says, if you lack any wisdom, ask of me and I'll give it to you. 
Psalm 2 verse 8 said, Ask of me and I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. Well, Father, we say Kenya belongs to us and your people. The nation of Kenya is a special place. It's an epicenter. It's an it's a epitome. It's a capital. It's a place of a movement. And I say, church, arise. Wake up from this, your sleep. Thou and you that slumber and sleep, Isaiah 52 said, Wake up, O Zion. Awake, 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 awake. For now the time has come that God has need of you. And don't be one of the ones that's fallen off the wall. Many have closed. Many churches, by the way, will never reopen because they didn't have the power of God and they don't now. They've backed down. They've chosen to submit and compromise themselves to evil. God never called us to listen to any edict. You know, back in the day, they were trying to say, oh, the edict of this one, the edict of the looking. There was Nebuchadnezzar. There was Nero. There was all these wicked men. Look at Hitler in Germany. Look at Stalin in Russia. Look at Mussolini from Italy. Look at the, these ones in history past. They're all in hell today. And they were trying to throw out things, what you should do, what you should do. We were never called by Jesus to submit to all of that. We're supposed to stand against the forces of darkness and say, no, we are the church triumphant. We are the church victorious. We are the ones who God has elected and ordained to stand as firebrands, watchmen, gatekeepers, warriors to begin to bring things and to speak things into being. And I declare that the revival, that heaven is opening, heaven is opening it now. He's opening it now. It's already being released and in motion. And I am doing this, says the Lord. You're going to begin to see mighty, mighty visitations. And I, I pray, Father, over those servants of yours, that really are hungering for you and you know you can trust them that they're faithful they're not foolish but they're faithful and you're going to visit them now in this season even in this day these few days now new visitations from god are going to come and you're going to begin to show and speak details of what to do next and i thank you father for the breakthrough and the mighty 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 movements of heaven on the earth jesus the model prayer that you prayed you taught your disciples, Father God, hallowed be your name, Almighty God, Heavenly Father. Your name is holy. Your name is hallowed. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And that's supposed to be our whole, our, our entire daily life. But yet for so many, too many, and most perhaps, it's not the case. But I thank you that there's a new visitation coming. And it's going to be God that gets all the glory. Lord, no man gets the glory of this stuff. No, 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 no. No man gets it because only God could have done it. And only the fool would think that he has some part, some big position in this. And let's stop, uh, <clears throat> you know, saying all these things to declare who we are. Why don't we just start talking more about God? When the anointing is there, people know it. When the power of God is moving, he gets the glory anyway because he's the one that initiated it. He's the one that started it. He's the one that's finishing it. And Jesus, your name is even Alpha and Omega, Bishop and Overseer of our souls. So we thank you that you are the Supreme Lord. And we lift the banner high. Jehovah Nisi, the banner over Kenya. His banner over us is love. Thank you for the movement of heaven on the earth in this city of Nairobi, in the nation of Kenya, throughout East Africa, across Africa, to the Middle East, back to America, up to Europe, all the way to Asia, and around the entire world. A new movement from heaven happening in this time right now. I declare it, Father, in Jesus' name. You, you said in Amos 3.7, I, surely I'll do nothing unless I first reveal my secret to my servant, the prophet. And when they begin to speak, people should echo it like a lion has roared and the people fear. The prophet speaks and then the people can echo the voice and follow it. I thank you for the implementation of the new movement that's happening right now in this land greater than ever before. Lord, we've seen moves of God in the past, great revivals that touched literally millions of people. But then it seemed that these things happen, they come and they go. But now in this time, something new is being opened in that right here in the middle, I'm right in the middle of the capital city, sitting here right now in the middle of the capital city, right in the center place. This is a very strategic place to declare this. 
The state house is over that way, the president's house. The parliament house is over that way. The, 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 the main media network station is right across the road here. We're right here. We're right here. And Father, I thank you that everybody, millions of people, countless millions will be touched by this revival. And it won't just be a revival, it'll be a reformation. It'll even be a revolution to change things that are, to make them as God has ordained them to be. And Father, we know by faith you said that you call things to be so that are not seen yet, but they are already there in the spirit. They're going to now happen in the natural. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to raise up successful business people to be great entrepreneurs. They're going to become multi-millionaires and billionaires. I thank you, Lord, for favor upon businesses. I thank you for breaking. You're going to break the devil of poverty. You're going to cause change. That's just, it's just on a level that's not been seen. And I thank you for this new movement. Every revival of the Holy Ghost has economic revival in it, has provision and financial blessing in it. It flows like that. People begin to be blessed. Every revival we've ever seen, that I've ever seen in my, in my ministry, I've been on all six continents, now 32 countries, which is a few, not so many, but it's a few. That's a good start. And then this whole uh, mess happened with this pandemic nonsense that stopped everybody from traveling. What a devil from hell. It's just from the devil. I, I pray, Lord, that you'll open everybody's eyes to see that, and they begin to fast and pray and declare fire against this pandemic, this nonsense thing. That the whole world opens up again. There needs to be free movement, free travel in Jesus' name. So much to say about that. But I thank you, Lord, that people are going to see it and, and come against it and not accept it. Not bow to, the, to, the, to, the, to the, the voice, the edict of the people saying, do this and do that. And God, you never said do it. You never said do it. You never said it. You never said it. I thank you, Lord, for total freedom, total victory, and that this thing is being broken. And revival, real revival, that has all kinds of flows of the miraculous, including successful excellence happening in the lives of people. I thank you for that, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of might and counsel and the fear of the Lord, according to Isaiah 11, 2, is, is really flowing into people. And they're going to begin to rise up as the elegant royals that they really are. The kings and the priests, the kings and the queens, the children are like the princes and the princesses, royal ambassadors for Jesus. Lord, you called us to be a royal priesthood. So why are people living in poverty? There's no royal that lives poor. It's never anybody that's a royalty on earth. You have these royals, but really we're called to be higher than them. Even any political uh, people worship the politicians are political. They run after them. But a preacher, oh, who are they? You see how deceived people are. People don't realize their true nature. Father, in Jesus name, you are going to reinstitute that. And people are going to begin to change. They're going to dress better. They're going to get things. They're going to put their faith out. They're going to say, I have to work on my life. And one thing, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to me again today. We need to build our personal world. You need to build your own, like, uh, your, your own organization. If I could even call it an empire without seeming, sounding so forward about too forward about it. An empire, your own thing, your own order. The structure of God in every individual person's life needs to become a glorious organization. And then if every, here's the key now, if everybody would do that, if everybody would do that, and then when we all come together, we're all like, we're all royals living in the glory, living in wealth, living in beauty, everything changes. Then where does poverty stand? People are that, you look at people that are poor and messed up and you say, hey, what happened to you, man? Come over here. Let me teach you a few things. And I command, yes, Lord, by divine authority, I, I feel this again. I command as God's servant right now, I am Thomas Manton IV, that is my earth name, but God has commissioned me, the Lord has, has, has appeared to me and laid his hands on me to be his prophet of the nation, so I speak under that divine authority. Listen to me. I declare 
and command that every preacher who's any good, not the, not the ones that are off and they can't hear God and they can't flow, but the ones who can get in tune, that they begin to teach people the word. Teach people the word. Bring the importance of the Holy Spirit, as I was saying. Without Him, you have nothing. You cannot produce Christianity. You cannot disciple nations. You cannot have power if you don't have the Holy Ghost. And then to teach people the Word of God. And then how to exercise their faith. The spirit of faith. The same spirit of faith like Abraham had. The same spirit of faith. And power that, that the servants of old had. And here's another thing. Every patriarch that walked with God was wealthy financially. Every single one. Solomon, David, Job, even Job. Jehoshaphat, that guy, was rich. And he got deceived in the end because he trusted a wrong person. He, he covenanted, covenanted together with a wrong person and it messed him up. But he had so much land and real estate, exotic animals in Tarshish. He had so much. And look at Moses took the wealth of the nation. When God delivered the people out of slavery, they took the wealth of the nation. That's something that the anointing can also do. You have no business, business being poor, struggling, obscure, crying like a victim when God has made you a royal, a royal unto himself. And a royal ambassador even to bring that power to other people. So rise up, people. Rise up now. Wake up. Shake yourself. Begin to cry aloud. Begin to walk it out. Begin to find the principles. Begin to work the laws of God. Work the economic system, the biblical economic system. Work it for yourself. Tithing and offering and sowing. First fruits. Giving to the poor. You, every day you should be giving something. Give even the little that you have. Take some of it and give it to someone. You're sowing a seed. And the Lord said in Isaiah 41, He that pities the poor, the Lord will also lift him up again, you know. And he'll repay God will repay. And when God repays, he's generous. Proverbs 11.25 says, The generous one, the one who get, lives to give, will be like his life, her life, will become a, like a well-watered garden. God will see to it. Ephesians 6.8 said, Whatever good thing you do for someone else, they may not do it back for you. They may not be able to or may, may not want to. But God, he will see and he will bless you. And when the, when the Lord is blessing you, success and favor is just an automatic thing. 95% of your prosperity comes from favor. From favor, God's favor. That's how you get blessed. And Father, I thank you that you're dressing people up for success, for presentation in excellence, that the church will become the royal entity and enterprise that it's supposed to be on the earth. And I thank you for the touch that's being released now and revival is being poured out I hear the Lord I hear the Lord I hear trumpets blowing in the spirit I can hear it in heaven in the heavenly realm in the heavenly world in the spirit I hear the trumpets blowing like there's an announcement being made there's a new coronation there's a new commissioning and these visitations are just going to begin to hit people Everywhere, And they're going to know what to do next. And they're going to get activated and busy in it. And the Lord says, you need to hear my voice. You don't need to hear it from man or hear so many different things. You need to hear me speak. You need to get with me enough that I will speak to you. And you'll know my instruction to you. And then you just do what I told you to do. And that's the thing that will become successful. And it will work because I have spoken and I have ordained it. And that is the word of the Lord. Let's lift our hands. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your fire. Thank you for your... Lord, you said in Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. You said the power to get wealth is ours. Deuteronomy 8, 18 is there. We have to have that. We thank you, Lord, for the greatest kingdom expanding kingdom advancing thing that's going to happen through so many people in this season from now it's going to be unprecedented 
The greatest days are not behind us. The greatest days are ahead of us. And we need to keep telling ourselves that, keep reminding uh, in the spirit world. We need to keep speak, building ourselves up in that. The greatest days are, be are, are just ahead of us. The latter house is greater than the former. That is the word of the Lord. And the silver, is, the silver and the gold is mine. The cattle, the cattle on a thousand hills and the thousand hills that the cattle are on are mine, says the Lord. The earth is mine, the world is mine, the, and the fullness thereof, and all they that dwell therein. Is anything too hard for me? He said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Here's the key on how to get things. You say, well, that's great, that's God. How do I get it? By faith. By understanding that you're supposed to be a lot, do a lot, have a lot, and manifest it. And this will be the greatest day and hour to be alive. The privilege that we have to be alive in this generation is paramount. So the Lord bless you. May he visit you as I've said. I believe it. I want to hear about it. I want to hear about it. I want to know about it. I am Thomas Manton IV. And I love you so much and I'm praying for you. For God to really revolutionize your life. And make you the great champion he's ordained you to be. The victor. Never the victim again. The victor. Triumphant and victorious are you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for partnering with me. And you can share this with your friends. And people that you know. Send this to everyone they need to hear. And I love you so much. Talk to you again on the very next broadcast. Amen.